আমাকে যদি পরবর্তীতে আসলে একটু কোশ্চেন দেওয়া হয় যে কোনগুলি আলোচনা করলে ভালো হবে আমি আজকে যেটা শুরু করতে চাচ্ছি সেটা হচ্ছে একেবারে স্ক্র্যাচ থেকে মানে একদম একোকার্ডিওগ্রাফি শুরু থেকে মানে যেহেতু এটা বেসিক্স এর ক্লাস এবং আরেকটা ক্লাস হবে ফেব্রুয়ারিতে তো এরপরে হয়তো আমরা হচ্ছে যে ডিজিজ ওরিয়েন্টেড বা ভালভুলা ডিজিজ এরকম ওরিয়েন্টেড এখন বর্তমানে আমরা কিভাবে আহ একর ইমেজ গুলি করি সেটা নিয়ে হয়তো আলোচনা করার আশা আছে তো আজকে ক্লাসটা হচ্ছে একেবারে বেসিং বেসিক্স আর একটা হচ্ছে যে প্লিজ আনসার মানে অল অফ আস উই ক্যান গেট রং সো ডোন্ট হেজিটেড টু আনসার সো ইফ ইউ আনসার আই আই ক্যান আই আল বি অ্যাবল টু এস্টিমেট দ্যাট ফ্রম ওয়ার আই হ্যাভ টু ডিসকাস মোর অ্যান্ড হুইচ পয়েন্ট আই হ্যাভ টু ইনফাসাইজ মোর অন দ্যাট অন দিস লেকচার সো ট্রাই টু আনসার অ্যান্ড পার্টিসিপেট প্লিজ Okay, all right. So, first I do have some... Uh, let me... Amar, do you want to share the screen? Yes, madam. Do you want to share Okay. So, oh, first uh, the reference, actually the, all the information uh, I'm including in my lecture today is actually from Feigenbaum Echocardiography book, uh, Mayo Clinic uh, Echo Manual by Dr. J.K.O. Mayo Clinic Echo Board Review, which is one of my most favorite, AHA and ACC guideline, actually AAC guideline as well, and my own uh, study images I just included here. Sorry. Okay, so first uh, I, I'd like to start with this, some question. Uh, try to participate, please. So this patient, this is an echocardiography and this is an M-mode. Uh, I'll be discussing about the M-mode more. Uh, so uh, I just want to know that this patient, the, whoever has this M-mode on echo, what kind of physical finding will be able to get for this patient opening snap uh, two tumor plop three uh, pericardial knock or knock i should say only and for this third heart sound so what will be the physical finding for this patient any uh, anyone want to answer the সবাইকে <laughs> রশিদকে মিউট করে দাও আমাকে দুইটা প্যাডালি সেশন দেখতে হচ্ছে তো দেখো আর কি পার্টিসিপেন্ট ক্লিক করো পার্টিসিপেন্ট ক্লিক করে 
Okay. 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 Yes, I, I got it. Yeah. Okay. So can um, I? Who it's ever? Just one minute. Okay. All right. Hey, Sorry for the inconvenience. That's okay. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, so this is a M mode through the mitral valve. We'll be discussing M mode mode. Whoever answered the opening snap, very good. It is a actually mitral stenosis and we'll be, we'll be able to hear the opening snap. So I'll discuss it more. Next question. What is the diagnosis? Actually, this is one of my echo, patient echocardiogram image. I try to record and put it here. So patient, uh, a, a 42 years old patient with hypertension, diabetes came with chest pain. There is a video actually. Munira, picture to the camera. Our mother is to record or play or play. I am sure I'm not sure why it's not playing. Um, okay, all right. So let, let's uh, skip this one if I able to open next because I have this slide. So this is one 32-year-old uh, man with history of severe cardiomyopathy with a history of uh, a cardiac surgery and came for routine follow-up. Uh, is there any thought for this patient? I actually kind of pointed, there is something here looks like. So this is one of the, one of my patient actually when I was fellow and I took and saved this image because uh, we'll, we'll be coming here next and then we'll talk more about this. Anybody has any idea gauge that what kind of pathology patient might have or not pathology, what, what was the problem here? Any answer in the chat box? No, it will be better if you unmute yourself because uh, it's uh, going back and forth in the chat box. Uh, maybe it will be uh, any answer there. Uh, tumor plot picture. Okay, all right. So um, let me go for that then. <clears throat> oh, so this is the three question. I'm sorry that uh, I am not able to show that previous picture. I'm not sure that was the video actually. So why not open? It? So let's let's uh, talk about the echocardiography. We all of us we know this is the echocardiography machine, and whoever is very new and wanted to learn the echocardiography, first thing they should learn about the machine, especially the keyboard. Actually, this is very important. Why do you acquire the? Why do you acquire, which button is acquired? How you set? How you do the PW, CW, color Doppler? how you change your gain, how you change your depth. So it's a different, different machine. This is actually Philips. I think this is a Philips machine and this is one of the Samsung machines. So I'm not sure which machine is available in Bangladesh, but it will be almost pretty same. The mechanism is same. So you should know the, get the orientation of, of that keyboard. To, to, uh, and here, especially in, in our country, actually, all the echocardiography uh, is done by the echo technician. But I'm sure I, I know that uh, so far, I know that in Bangladesh, actually, the cardiologist is the one who performed the um, uh, procedure. So, of course, you have to know that even though you, if you have even technician, you, you, sh you should know the actually this uh, keyboard that how to play it and how to get the images. And this is the actually recently the in 2017 SEC and HA actually they approved the handheld echocardiography, which is very convenient because it's not it's, it can be portable. It is a very small device you can carry anywhere, and actually this is also cheaper than the big machine. So 
especially this one is actually I took this picture from my resident, all of our medicine resident, like from the department, they, they actually use this one or like especially the whenever they need to do the point of focus uh, echocardiography or the very basic, like they need to know the ejection fraction before getting the office, before calling cardiology or before getting the, uh, you know, the echo, official full echocardiogram. They use this device in the ER emergency room or right after admission. One patient just came with shock in ICU. They need to know the ejection fraction. They need to know whether there is a pericardial effusion or not or any other, especially, uh, I'm sure Dasbibai knows that uh, ICU people like to know all the time when the fluid status of the patient, because patient is shortness of breath, may be intubated. So they will like to see the IVC, whether it is very dilated or it's a collapse, patient is dehydrated or not. So it's a very, very important during shock or during a chest pain even or in acute condition, especially uh, after the trauma. So there is one type of echo, actually we practice here that called FAST, like focus assessment of sonography for trauma. It's called FAST program. It's a point of care ultrasono which actually uh, includes a point of care echocardiogram too. So I think this is also very important for Bangladesh as well in the emergency room or in the ICU setup. This kind of device, like very portable, small, only drawback for this device is actually uh, we are not able to do the measurement. It's only 2D and color. So only these two kind of information it can give, like this one, like I always see my, my residents and fellow, they are carrying this kind of device. They can get the 2D and they can get the color only, but not the measure, at least to get the initial idea what kind of problem patient is with they are dealing with, especially the ejection fraction and other pathology. So, and you can, this is actually their mobile. This is not actually, the, so people need to buy only this probe. That's it. And they, this is their mobile, uh, like, you know, the, our cell phone. So that's very convenient. The cell phone is get, uh, working as uh, the monitor. So that's why it's very convenient. Okay. So what kind of probe we use? This is the sonogram, like all kind of, so echocardiogram is a sonogram of the heart, definitely. So it's a three kind of probe. Usually there is another probe, PDOF. I didn't put the picture. Maybe I'll show that PDOF whenever I'm discussing the valvular stenosis. So this is the linear, linear probe. Linear probe, actually, we use this probe. Linear means that, you know, that uh, face of the probe is very um, uh, straight and it's a, the, it's a megahertz, it's a high megahertz, means it's up to 5 to 20 megahertz. Whenever the megahertz, the velocity of that probe is higher, they actually able to catch the superficial or the small structure more than the other. That's the basic difference. I'm not discussing very, um, you know, that uh, physics about the sonogram, but just a little bit when the more you have the megahertz, your you will be able to pick the tiny, tiny structure more than the other. That's how the basic difference. So this linear probe we use for, and it is also very superficial. It don't go in the depth of the sono. Uh, images will not be very deep. It is very superficial. So this kind of probe is actually we use for the vascular study means like carotid artery or DVD. So vascular study because it's a very superficial structure, we use this kind of probe, linear. Then curvilinear, this is the very popular, the most like ultrasound probe that is for the abdominal ultrasound, curvilinear, and this is also one to five megahertz. And this is our cardiology probe, actually. It's, it's called phased array probe. This is also one to five megahertz. Only thing is, it's, it's very tiny from single one point, the sonogram actually uh, that uh, a frequency goes and it's kind of conical, like it's go, goes triangular. The why it is made like that, or why it is not big or so different, because we need to get the echocardiogram from the inter intercostal space. Because ribs is a very bony structure, we cannot get with the sonograph; it comes out black. So in between the intercostal space, there is a very small area. From there, we need to send our the sono um, uh, in, uh, our um, uh, 
uh, uh, signal and get the image. That's why it's a very small, like from a single point, we run it and it get actually crossed out. So that is the reason this is actually like conical or phase array method we use for the echocardiogram. So this is kind of basics. So and also we need to know another thing, the indicator, because in the echocardiogram, it's all about the, the way your indicator is placed to take the picture. So this is actually shown sometimes there is a dot, sometimes there is a little, little uh, groove. So this is the indicator because this orientation is necessary to take the images. And what is the difference between the sono probe and the echocardiogram phased array probe? The difference is actually the sono probe. The, this is actually interesting. That's why I put it. The sono probe, the way you are, uh, uh, like it's, it don't flip. So, uh, whenever you, the probe, right side of your probe will show right side of the patient and left side is left side. But in echocardiogram, right side of the probe will show the left sided structure. That's why in the echocardiogram, we always see the heart is flipped. Like parastan and all this heart looks like flipped because of this, because it goes from the one point, you know, the sono, the um, signal goes from one point. So it get flip to the other side. This is the difference. That's why sono probe cannot be used as a echocardiogram probe. But however, the probe I showed this one before, this one has actually set up. So whenever you attach with your cell phone, it kind of gives you the option whether you want it to use as a sono or echo. So it actually can switch in between the curvilinear and the phase array. So that's why it is possible with one probe. But if it is only a designated sono probe, it cannot be used as an echo. It has to have the option of to make it phase array. Okay, so this is kind of very basics. So patient position, and I'll, I'll try to do next 10 slide very quick. So patient and examiner position, these two, this is two ideal positions. So you can be standing and like, uh, and uh, uh, like cover the patient. And this, so it's just for your comfort, the way you like. I usually like this way, like sitting down. Uh, patient can be lying on the side. So in, in that case, both. So echo, to do the echo, you have to have the practice to move your both hand together. I usually scan actually with the right hand and I put my machine in the left side so I can press the button with the left hand. So it's it depends on your comfort. So which way you want to do it. Okay, so and, and another thing, whenever we get the echo, like most of the patient position also, not only the probe position or our position, also patient position is very important. Uh, along with some time, patient need to lie in the patient back. Most of the time, we prefer patient like little left lateral. Along with the look at the hand, the hand have to go under the head. So in that case, it's actually space out the intercostal space. So there is a more area so we can look for. Otherwise, the intercostal space is very narrow. Okay, so first view. So... This is a parasternal long axis. This is the actually very first view we, we always uh, start our imaging. So transducer position, where it will be? It will be second to fourth intercostal spaces depend on the patient, actually the um, height of the patient. If it is a very um, tall patient, in that case, actually the uh, thoracic uh, um, cavity length also high. So it has to be like uh, two to second intercostal space. We know that how to find out too, right? Because whenever you put your like uh, a sternum, that uh, GF sternum and body of the sternum. So it's the junction um, from junction to the sternal junction that say the first right-sided space is the second intercostal space. And then you can go down from there. So transducer position will be left second to fourth intercostal space. And this is the beginning. And what in structure we usually see here. So this is actually the practical position. Patient is, this is a most likely the second. So they are in the third or fourth intercostal space. Most importantly, the indicator, I was showing the indicator like this thing, this thing has to face in the 
right uh, right shoulder towards the right shoulder so indicator will be in the right shoulder towards the right shoulder patient right shoulder is here this is the left shoulder so indicator will be in the right shoulder and also the space will be second to fourth usually usually we get it third or fourth intercostal space so we can get this is we call it long parasternal long axis view so parasternal long axis view what are the structure we see we see left atrium mitral uh, mitral valve um, then left ventricle and so mainly this is called like left ventricular inflow and outflow view. So it may left ventricular in mitral valve and this aortic valve and aorta. And also we see part of the RV, right ventricle, which is actually RVOT, like a right ventricular outflow tract little bit. We see very, sometimes we can see also something flipping here, which is actually pulmonary valve. A lot of time we miss. Or oh, maybe it is a thrombus, maybe it is a good patient is getting pee. It's actually most of the time we can see the pulmonary valve and pulmonary regurgitation when you put color here. So, what are the in between these two mitral valve, which one is anterior, which one is posterior? What is this one? Because it's very important to know the basic structure, what you see. Then if you're able to see the norm, if you're able to pick the normal, it's easy to pick the abnormal too. So what is this? So there is the anterior and posterior. Uh, so let me tell you, and mitral, valve is, mitral valve is the only valve is bileaflet, right? All other valve, valve in the heart is actually trileaflet, aortic valve, pulmonary valve, and tricuspid is a tricuspid. So only bicuspid valve in the, um, uh, un until, uh, 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 until there is a bicuspid aortic valve. So otherwise, normally, all the time, there is uh, all other valves are tricuspid, only mitral valve is bicuspid, anterior and posterior. So anterior, how to figure out the, which one is anterior valve and which one is posterior valve? So valve, whatever is attached with the or next to the aorta or septum is anterior leaflet. Whatever leaflet of the mitral valve is attached with next to the left atrial appendage, that is posterior. So septum and aorta, because not all the time we see aorta, not all the time we see the septum. So that's why we need multiple uh, landmark to figure out which valve it is. And usually the aortic anterior mitral leaflet is very big and posterior is small, but you may not see that big as small in all the views. Sometimes some view is posterior looks bigger than the anterior. So that's why the size of the valve is not the important one. The what structure is next to that, that is important to figure out which valve we are able to see. So um, septum and the aorta, next to the septum or aorta is the anterior and next to the left atrial appendage is the posterior. And if you are able to pick the anterior, definitely the other one is posterior. There is two. Like there is a joke, right? What you stood in the exam second, how many participants? Two. So like that. Anyway. Um, so this is the parasternal long axis view. Also, we see a lot of other um, uh, pathology in this view. I'll, I'll come next, actually. I have slide like separately. What are the more common pathology do you see in a, um, in a one um, view? So this is parasternal long axis. So parasternal long axis, the same area. We have another one. So that was the RV. I, I said LV, LV inflow and outflow, right? So this is the parasternal long axis, LV view. And this is parasternal long axis, same places. So if the same places, if we move our probe, little bit of inferior medial, inferior medial of the patient. So little bit tilting down. So it will be inferior and the medially. If we move, move little bit inferior medially, actually you have to practice. So echo is all about your hand technique. So if you move that inferior medial, we'll be able to see actually this RV, R, um, RV inflow view. So this was LV inflow outflow view, and this is RV inflow view. This is right atrium, right ventricle, and this is the tricuspid.
speed valve also we are able to see the part of the you know the uh, exactly the drainage point of in view vena cava with here will be the superior vena cava this is coronary sinus and this is actually eustachian valve so coronary sinus actually very important to know whoever is doing the ep or biventricular pacemaker because we send our left ventricular uh, leads through the coronary sinus so a lot of time we practice with the sono guided to get the even with the um, uh, fluoro even after fluoro they are not some time that uh, procedure who have cardiac Cardiologists may not get the exact coronary sinus, so they they would like to get on same point actually the echocardiogram to do the coronary sinus because we push coronary uh, left ventricular um, um, lead uh, AICD lead through the coronary sinus to venous sinus and the left side of the heart. So this is actually so there are um, also another thing there is a aortic valve right which valve it is we know that there is a trileaflet for the aortic valve so which leaflet is which one? So this is actually the right side, right coronary cups of the aortic valve, and this is non-coronary cups, not the next to the LV means it's a left coronary cup. This is actually non-coronary cups, and this is the right coronary cups of the aortic valve. Here also seeing the valve orientation for the tricuspid valve. So which your tricuspid valve has three leaflet, right? We know that anterior posterior and septum. So this is the only view we can see actually not only view there is another short axis view we can see the posterior. We, why, why it is so important to know that which valve it is definitely it's a very very important to know because it can guide the thoracic surgeon sometime we need to do the valve surgery the patient has uh, endocarditis the patient has vegetation so if we can give them idea which valve has the prost valve has the tumor vegetation to operate so it's important to know which leaflet of the valve is which one so this one is actually anterior and this is actually posterior so if you are able to see the LV because LV left ventricle will be here if you are able to see the left ventricle in that case it will be actually septal leaflet if you are not able to see the LV this is the posterior leaflet that's how it works so this is anterior and this is in this view this is posterior but sometime you see part of the lv here that means it is actually septum not the rv wall rv posterior wall so it will be posterior leaflet of the tricuspid valve okay so um all right so now the parasternal long axis is gone. Now parasternal short axis. So short axis is exact same position, exact same position. Only what we do, we the same way. Only we rotate our probe. It was towards the indicator was towards the right shoulder. Now indicator has to be ninety degree. You have to clockwise rotate the probe, and it it will go to the left shoulder towards the left shoulder you can get the short axis because it's a perpendicular with that long axis so definitely it has to be short axis the same area only we rotate the probe 90 degree clockwise perpendicular to the parasternal long axis so in the short axis there is actually different different so let me show you. i think this picture will be very very interesting so Whenever we are in short axis, we can actually tilt back and forth. We can go back and forth with our probe and get the different, different cut. So usual cuts are we, we do towards the aortic valve. Then we do actually to, uh, uh, through the mitral valve, then through the pulmonary valve, uh, I'm sorry, papillary muscle and apex. Usually the four, four plane, we get the short axis normally. If we see something, we say something means, Actually, this is the slogan in the um, uh, train uh, in New York City. If you see something, say something for the terror attack. Like if you see something suspicious, you have to complain. So that's why they, they actually there is a, um, all that all the places they post actually this dialogue that if you see something, say something. So here also this is the this is the four usual cut we get from the short axis but if you see something there you do more images that's why i said you see, see something say something so 
short axis, this is the aortic valve, right? This is the aortic valve level. So aortic valve, what we see here, this is the left atrium, right? This is the left atrium. This is interatrial septum. This is right atrium. This is tricuspid valve. And this is RV outflow pulmonary valve and going out. It's the same schematic actually presentation here. So only question will be here that which tricuspid valve we see here. So definitely this is actually same thing like this is the anterior and this is the posterior. This is the another view we see posterior, the tricuspid valve too. And among these three um, aortic valve leaflet, which one is which comes? So the landmark here is whatever valve exactly next to the interatrial septum with that is actually non-coronary cups and next to the rv right coronary cups next to the la left coronary cups and we can see the small slit here actually practically we can see also this is actually left main artery is arising from here this little slit left main artery left coronary that is the, the the reason for the naming that left coronary artery is arising from the left coronary cups and with the right right coronary cups right RCA, right coronary arteries arising, and nobody is arising from there. That's why it is the non coronary cups. This is the short axis papillary muscle level, also, this one. And this is the same thing the structure and everything. So, he, this, this view actually also important whenever we see something. ASD or PFO, like interatrial septum, we can see some gap or some flow is going. If it is a PFO, we don't see the gap. We see uh, like little color flow, blood is crossing through. So that is usually patent for amen ovale. So that kind of structure we see. Another thing we can see actually here, like it's a, uh, very important. So after the pulmonary artery, we can see the patent doctor artery. So there is little modified view also we do that is for the especially for the kids, that's called ductal view. We will be able to see the aorta and, and the pulmonary artery and there is a patent duct in between, especially it is very clear with the color flow. So this is also very important view. And all the, you know, this wall also will come and um, uh, will be important for the wall motion abnormalities. Okay, so next view is epical. So we came from the parasternal. Parasternal, Long axis has two part LV, RV. Parasternal short axis, we are scanning different slice of the short axis of the left ventricle and the right ventricle. And now we are in the, oh, another thing I just want to mention whenever we are in this view, especially this short axis view, if patient has, we can get the idea about the RV. RV is whenever, let's say, there is a, a patient has severe pulm pulmonary hypertension, most commonly acute pulmonary hypertension is pulmonary embolism. That's a critical, critical uh, uh, acute uh, uh, shortness of breath. So patient came with acute shortness of breath. We see D-shape means the RV pressure is volume and pressure is goes very high and that it push the septum and we get the septum get flattened. Septum get flattened and it gives you in a state of circular LV, it gives you pattern of D means this is a straight, the, the straight part of the D and this is the round of the D. So we call it D shape. It become D shape with acute P. That is also important. Okay, apical four chamber view. Apical four chamber view, usually this is the same place we hear the mitral valve, actually the sound, right? The fifth, um, um, fifth intercostal space below the nipple, the indicator will be downwards or three o'clock position. We get four chamber view, we, we can see here. So that is a apical four chamber view. Apical four chamber view, the uh, structure also from the, actually apical has two, three, four, five. So three, five, two, two three, four, four types of view we can see from the apical. Apical four chamber is the first one. Then what we do, we rotate our probe whenever we rotate to 90 degree from the three chamber to 12 o'clock position, that indicator we wrote it same place. We get two chamber view. And then also keeping this place, actually if we tilt a little bit of upward, we can see the aortic 
uh, root or aortic outflow area that's called five chamber i'll show you the picture five chamber view so five chamber then uh, same places only little tilting will give you the five chamber so four chamber five chamber whenever 12 o'clock position the indicator we can get two chamber and also whenever it is the indicator it's same place road the indicator pointing towards the right shoulder and little bit sometime we need to go medially we can get the three chamber view or Epical long axis view, another way it called. So let me go. This is the two chamber, like we are rotating epical two chamber to 90 degree, like 12 o'clock position. So we get actually how the picture looks like. So this is the four chamber view LA, mitral valve, LV, RV, tricuspid, and RA, interatrial, interventricular septum. Lot of pathology, lot of pathology. Most of the valvular uh, measurement is done with this. So hope I'll discuss actually next lecture or the consecutive lecture, all this, uh, how we measure those. And this is the two chamber, that two chamber view. So look at here. So here, which one is the mitral leaf? So this one, this mitral leaflet, there is one leaflet, another leaflet. So this one is actually interventricular septum, right? So this is definitely anterior and this is posterior. Also here we can see after, actually left atrial appendage here the little pouch that is left atrial appendage so whatever next to the left atrial appendage actually this is very important landmark during te transesophageal echocardiogram so this is posterior leaflet and in the fourth chamber well, which one is the tricuspid with valve definitely this is whatever is with the septum it is septal and this is anterior so here also this this side is the septum this is this is actually anterior mitral leaf because in this view in two chamber view mitral valve both leaflet looks same same length it looks exactly same so this is actually next to the septum because here we have our septum so it is and it will this one will be the anterior leaflet and this one will be the posterior leaflet okay and this is that i was talking about Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, something happened. Uh, okay, let me go further. Uh, yes, so this is that, that um, whenever from the five chamber, the same, I'm sorry, four chamber, we till the probe, we can see the aortic, the aortic valve and the outflow. So that's called five chamber view. This is two chamber and this is three chamber. So it's parastan, it's also called apical long axis. Like parastanal long axis, another name for this three chamber view is apical long axis from the apex. Is the same way you can see only the apex because parastanal long axis, you are not able to see the apex. This is the view, the, the exact same way parastanal long axis, but you can see the apex. And this is subcostal view. So subcostal view, actually, we, we, we do from the subcostal Postal, right, so it's subcostal, and also the probe, the indicator will be in the right side. The indicator is in the right side, and this is the subcostal view we can get. So it's subcostal view. It I'm sorry, why not moving? Okay. Anyway, so um, subcostal view is actually very important. Also, this is like two things is very commonly we see in the subcostal view. That is one is like uh, for the pericardial, it's a very sensitive view for the specially to find out the pericardial tamponade. So this is, um, okay, so LA, LV, RA, RV, right? So pericardial tamponade, we can see the RV compression or RV collapse. This is liver and this is the, actually if we do M mode through this RV and LV, we will be able to figure out whether if there is a diastolic collapse of RV or not. Patient is having having large amount of pericardial effusion doesn't mean that always there will be tamponade. So to find out the tamponade picture along with the clinical scenario, we need to have the RV compression. So this is the very best view 
to find out that whether patient is developing with the M mode through this uh, RV and LV, we can figure out patient is patient has the echo finding of pericardial tamponet or not. So this is one important thing. Another important thing we get in this view is actually this is a ASD. The color flow is crossing through the interactial septum. This is a ASD. Also, we can see the septal gap with the 2D and along with that blood flow. So this is very important view for that. Then last view. This is the last view, supra, supra external view. So Supraesternal view actually it's done in the uh, let me show you the picture so it's right here so indicator will be in the top indicator towards the jaw patient has to extend the uh, neck and supraesternal this is also very important view because from the supraesternal view we'll be able to see the arch of the aorta which is very important to diagnose the dissection quartation subclavian artery stenosis so those are the Actually, structure we see here, left subclavian, common carotid left, and brachiocephalic. So we'll, we, we can get those kind of pathology from the. So this is the summary of the view uh, we just discussed, the same thing. All right. And I was just talking about the suprasternal view. Suprasternal view, whenever we do the, actually, the pulse wave Doppler, Usually we see this kind of uh, flow that pulse wave Doppler, the blood is going out very smoothly and periodically. But if we have quotation, what happened? One thing we get very, we can see the 2D narrowing here. We can see the turbulence with the color flow and also the pattern of the Doppler pulse wave or continuous wave gets like it is a uh, quotation means quotation is like the obstruction, right? Is It is a blockage pathway. So it actually goes, it takes long time to go forward. So that's why the pattern from this, this sharp flow to this type of pattern is kind of pattern recognition that is actually takes long time to go forward, long time to go to go forward. So it takes time. This kind of pattern develop with the quotation. Okay, so little bit of uh, any question. Actually, I want to stop before going to little bit of uh, basic how we, what is the color flow, what is pulse and uh, continuous. So any question, please. No question. Okay. All right. So we do color flow. What is the color flow? So color flow, actually, any, can anybody tell me what is the, um, uh, if no question, so I have, I do have question for you guys. So what is the meaning of this red and the black, uh, um, you know, that uh, like we put, uh, we can see whenever we are doing the color Doppler, we see that yellow, red, black, and black, blue, and greenish. So what is the meaning of that? Can anybody answer? Please, if you can, please unmute and answer. What is the meaning of this uh, red, yellow, and the blue? You know, let me tell you, when I was a fellow, like resident, actually, very first day, whenever my professor asked me what is the meaning of that, I, I, I thought it is a like uh, oxygenated blood, like red and the venous blood, and that will show as a blue. So it's a venous. And so that even I, I was thinking like that in the very beginning. So don't worry if you don't know. So if can anybody answer? I see here around 50 it's, participants. Uh, away from. Uh, yes, please. Uh, away from, away from uh, probe is blue and uh, the, towards the probe is uh, red. Yes, very good. So uh, it's actually direction. So from this color, color flow, actually we can get a couple of things. One is the direction of the blood, velocity of the blood and like turbulence, like is there any obstruction or not? I don't know who answered. Uh, Nilu for Fatima. Very good. Thank you. So, exactly. So, whenever the probe, so uh, this is our probe, right? In a view, this is our probe. And from there, we get the phase array images. So, if it is going towards the probe, this is red and yellow, if it is going away from the probe. So this blue actually going this direction here, 
we don't know this blood is going this way or this way actually so we from this color we know that this blood is going direction is this so this is the direction so color flow can give us the idea of which direction and the velocity and the turbulence information of all these we can get so just to remember if you don't have this uh, scale in front of you so another thing the turbulence whenever we get turbulence we get kind of yellow yellow and very high turbulence get green same thing blue get cyan and then it can get green so turbulence is actually from red to yellow or blue to cyan those are the turbulence thing but whenever it is a laminar flow we get pure blue and pure red so that is the thing also there is a parameter right in the can if we see that there is a two number written here centimeter minus 100 centimeter per second what is the meaning of that and this is plus 100 centimeter per second means this is the actually the velocity of the blood so whenever it's a hundred velocity of the blood, it gets yellow color. Then little less than that is red color. So center of this marker is actually less velocity. So the more we go up, we are, um, let me show it a second. You know, this video box is coming in front of me. Anyway, so see one two three four five six seven so from center to up this is scale giving us the idea of velocity so higher the color in the top those are the higher velocity in the center those are the low velocity or slow velocity the same way with the blue and the cyan as well the faster more faster is get cyan more faster get yellow from red and laminar flow is red so this is the meaning of this parameter that plus and minus centimeter per second so this is color flow and the color flow is very very actually uh, why i put this uh, cartoon because you know the blue away b a blue away b a r t blue away red towards blue so when i was fellow like i was able to I, most of the time i mix up which one is away which one is close if i don't have that scale in front of me i was mixing up so i was you know this is a simpson bart simpson bart you we, you know this all of us we know this character right when you're small we used to see this cartoon simpson bart so b a r t blue away red towards bird so that's why i put this picture because this was my way to memorize it okay all right so this color flow so how we do the velocity with the color flow because whenever i'll be discussing the um uh, you know the valvular stenosis especially mitral valve stenosis that will be very important to understand it so what we do sometime we can change actually this velocity parameter other time we saw 100 103 this one is usually the setup is 69 69 but sometimes we want to get the velocity means we want to make the pizza or very smooth we can make up and down with the velocity parameter there is a button actually we can change it which one we want to change which how much we want to change so you have to learn with the machine with that buttons that change the velocity color flow velocity so this is actually the so i i, I already explained this is the lowest slow flow this is the slow flow this is the high flow this is the high flow right so this is going away going towards so whenever we do the mitral flow actually we kind of the lower one like going away one we decrease the velocity to usually 40 30 and then so this actually exactly gives you the idea of because we want to give this aliasing velocity and that high flow state so here this blue is here like just flip uh just flip this picture this part and put top of this one so if i take this part and put top of here so it will be blue side and then yellow the same way here so blue cyan and then 
yellow and then it is going down. So it is exactly this cyan place will be this 41. So that is my point, how we do the measurement. So this will be 40 low and this cyan will be 41. And this yellow means this place is exactly 69. So this is very important to know like why we are getting this pizza form and this concentrated high velocity, the highest maximum velocity, that will be important to measure whenever we do especially the mitral stenosis pizza. How we do? So I'll discuss in detail on that time. So this is the usually, that's how it look like the color flow and how we do the adjustment to get the highest velocity. And in the center, very close to the stenotic valve, actually, the blood gets stagnant, blood don't move, right? Because it's a closed door. So in the very close to the door, actually, there is almost very minimum blood movement. So that's why it is actually the slow flow. And this surrounding area is very high flow and the velocity is high. So that's why that's how we get the pizza. And whenever crossing the stenotic valve, it gives you turbulence. That's why it's a different, different color. So beyond that, uh, beyond that stenotic valve, here it is a laminar blue and here also laminar yellow. It's a going away laminar and this is towards laminar red. Those are the turbulence flow. And here we are getting the maximum velocity point with this changing the velocity parameter here. That we'll discuss more with the, during the mitral stenosis pizza, how we do it. So it's just basic of color. Then another thing we always say pulse wave continuous wave. So pulse wave is actually pulse means point. Usually I say point. So pulse is point, one point. We are getting the Doppler velocity of only one point, this square. So this is pulse wave. Go, excuse me. Continuous wave is through that line, what is the highest velocity of the blood movement? We are able to get that constantly. Like it comes like, let's say I'm getting five here, 10 here, 15 here. So it can give me the highest maximum laminar presentation of that pulse wave. So each and every point from the pulse wave get accumulated and gives us the continuous wave. So that's called the continuous wave. And this is, oh, I'm sorry. This mark, my daughter was playing with my slide last night so I can see uh, her presentation here as well. Anyway, uh, so this is the pulse wave one point and continuous wave is the whole line gives you the Doppler. So that's how, how it looks like, it looks like here. So that one, if I do with the mitral, the mitral valve, this is a mitral valve inflow. The pulse wave, single one point, single one point velocity represented as a pulse wave. The const continuous, this is a MR. So this is a continuous, through that line, the all the maximum velocity, it will all the velocity will come in a laminar way and give you the maximum velocity all together is continuous wave Doppler. So pulse wave Doppler, continuous wave Doppler. How we get the pressure in that's called Bernoulli equation. Bernoulli equation, we actually take the highest velocity, the maximum point of velocity and the pressure gradient means this is across the valve, right? We are just talking about this is across the mitral valve, aortic valve. So this is across the valve, the point is pulse and the continuous is continuous wave. But how much is the pressure gradient? Velocity is the way the force, the blood is moving there, right? So that is the velocity. From that velocity, we are able to get the pressure difference between two chambers. Means we know that if it is a negative pressure here, if it is a positive pressure here, whenever we are getting the diastole, in that time, the blood will go very high and push into inside the 
left ventricle. So there is the pressure. What is the? It depends on the way it it will go. The blood will grow from the LA to LV. It will depend on the pressure gradient, means pressure difference. So if it is a ten here, if it is a five here, it will go. The pressure difference is five. Same way, if it is a ten here, ten here, the pressure difference is zero. Nothing can go. Like which is. Not nothing can go, but very minimum pressure difference during diastolic dysfunction. That's why the problem happened. So we need to, the way we know this pressure difference from the pressure gradient, from the velocity, the way the blood is going, the more the velocity means the pressure difference is more and blood is moving more. If pressure difference is less, blood is moving less, the gradient is less. So the, the way we do from the Bernoulli equation. So we take the velocity, we take the velocity, let's say this one, 4.5. So what is the equation to get the pressure? This is the pressure gradient. This is the pressure gradient. Pressure gradient means four V squared, four into velocity squared. So this one looks like most likely it is 4.5 meter per second. So easiest way actually, like if you have to do that 4.5 square and then multiply by four, that is kind of unit calculator. 4.5 square is how much? I really don't know. So easiest way to do, you double the thing first instead of four V square, make it two, multiply by two, because if you take this, four inside the VU square, in that case, it will turn into two. Two into two is four, right? So it's easier to multiply that 4.5 first with two is nine, like 4.5 into two is nine, and then make it a square, 81. So here, the pressure gradient is 81 for, I'm sorry, 81 for this patient. 4V squared, 4V squared. So easier way, first make that double and then square. So it will, you don't need calculator. You can do just uh, mentally. So this that is the Bernoulli equation. To see from the velocity, we can get the pressure gradient because this is the main thing actually gives us idea how the blood will move inside the heart with lot of pathology. Okay, M mode. M mode is the another thing we do. We usually, nowadays, actually, whenever it's the 50, 60 century, that time, actually, there was a uh, M mode, a uh, uh, lot of practice for M mode. Nowadays, we do very minimum M mode, and because we have 2D, we have 3D, we have volumetric measurement. So we very rarely we use, but still some of the pathology, actually, we can get definitely like very minutely, we can measure with the M mode only. So this is the M mode actually across the mitral valve, across the mitral valve M mode. Usually do, we do in the tip of the mitral valve. So this is the E wave and A wave. E wave means ejection part of the diastole and A wave is atrial contraction. We know that, right? That systole, systole, diastole, the psychiatric cycle. So E and wave, and it is actually M mode uh, e mitral valve, and it's actually one, uh, one and opposite mitral valve, two, this is the M mode across. So we can get some pathology from there also, like especially it is important for SAM, you know, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, systole, anti -systole, um, systolic motion of the anteriomital leaflet, SAM. So because during the, it's very actually, because M mode velocity is very high. It can, the M mode is very suitable because up to 1000 to 2000 actually, Velocity can be picked from the M mode. Wherever the 2D can pick actually up, up to 100 velocity. So whenever you have very minute velocity thing is there, will not be able to pick from that 2D. We need the M mode. The same here, same here, this this is the systole, right? We know the, we need to know the, whenever we are doing the echo, we need to know the EKG interpretation of the cardiac cycle, right? Beginning of the QRS to middle of the T is systole. And from T to beginning of next QRS, this is diastole. So this is systole, this is diastole. So 
whenever is the mit when the mitral valve is open during diastole right t2 next qrx so this is the period the mitral valve is open because this is the diastole and this is after that after closing of the mitral valve this period is systole so look at the this is anterior mitral leaflet this is posterior mitral leaflet the anterior mitral leaflet it should be straight like the this one it should be straight close so but here sometimes we are not able to exactly see with the 2d but we are we can see with this a mode that this is the um, anterior mitral leaflet during the systole wherever it should be straight instead of straight is going towards the interventricular septum and giving you the outflow tract obstruction so this kind of pattern is very important to diagnose actually so with the t2d we are almost not able to pick it up with the gradient but is the real sam or anterior mitral leaflet is going towards the interventricular so we can see only with the m mode so this is still applicable m mode we still use to detect the sam systolic anterior mitral leaflet for hocum hypertrophic cardiomyopathy patient to get the outflow tract obstruction sam is there or not because that is very important if sam is there high dose beta blocker right so that is the treatment option so anyway so this is one application of m mode m mode means actually the, what we do we send the signal in a single line this is not the velocities this is the actually the tissue representation of that one line of the heart means this is actually rv wall this is rv cavity this is the interventricular septum this is the mitral anterior posterior leaflet anterior posterior leaflet this is the posterior wall of the heart and this is the pericardium so this one line represent tissue representation of the heart is the m in simple another place we you, you, you still use the m mode very uh, so this is another tamponade tamponade it is very difficult to diagnose without m mode because we need to see the what is the meaning of the tamponade right is a rv collapse during the diastole so from the 2d same thing we are not able to because the velocity high, highest can peak the 2d is 100 and i said the m mode can peak up to 1000 to 2000 so this is same thing again systole and diastole systole diastole so systole what this is the same thing rv wall this is rv wall this is the pericardium this is the pericardial effusion here this is the rv wall and this is the aortic valve label like this is the aorta this is again the effusion here so this is the rv l and the septum so what we see usually the it's in systole this is the systole right this is the systole systole what it should do it should do the do the contraction means it should do the rv wall should go come inside see that interventricular septum the interventricular septum is coming inside and during the diastole it is opening this is the systole it's coming inside because it will be collapsing this is the systole and this is a diastole part of the septum but the rv wall is doing other way around look at the system the diastole this is the diastole right from t to next next qrs is the diastolic period of the in the ekg so in the diastole it should open the other way it should be going this way instead of giving is coming inside so it is a diastolic rv collapse which is suggestive of echocardiographic finding of Tamponade. So this we cannot get with the 2D. We need to get with the M mode. Extremely important because it's an acute cardiac uh, critical condition, life threatening, right? So that.
uh, how many times do we have? Can we go? Okay, little more. So, parastana long x. I'm not sure. Actually, nobody is asking me any question or anything. I really do have the participant here or not. It looks like I'm the only one talking. Uh, so, uh, parastana long x. Is what are the what are the, so today? Um, how many more time I do have? फ्रैक्शन so parastana long axis view definitely we do that you know from the 2d we can measure and from the m mode also we can measure the interventricular septum thickness lv cavity thickness <clears throat> lv cavity lv cavity during systole and diastole that is the way we measure actually ejection fraction one way to measure ejection fraction which is not very acceptable nowadays and also the posterior thickness so you can get the hokam hypertrophic cardiomyopathy impression as well we usually the uh, the in thickness for the um, uh, lv wall is up to 1 right if it is more than 1 like 1.3 up to 1.2 we call it mild up to 1.6 we call it moderate and more than 1.6 we call it severe hypertrophic cardiomyopathy so those are the impression we can get from here and um another very shortly how to do the ejection fraction actually most of the places the before uh, even a lot of report i got from bangladesh uh, maybe little old maybe nowadays nobody does it also nobody does it here in, like you know this from the dimension so dimension left ventricular in diastolic dimension minus in systolic dimension so we get it we kind of stop our um, image and we get the diastolic dimension we get the systolic dimension and from there we can actually get the fractional shortening this is not this is that was the old method to do the ejection fraction nowadays nobody used this use it and also excuse me it is not really acceptable and not recommended to do the ejection fraction there is another equation called actually from this fractional shortening we kind of square 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 and divide and multiply by 100 that's called quinone in equation so but that is not acceptable anymore the reason is actually lot of time your lv function may not only the basal so this is the basal part of the lv right so basal function may be very good but your the rest of the lv function may not be good so if we do the basal function the linear measurement and find out the ejection fraction that is not the true interpretation of the ejection fraction that why now it is recommended to do the volumetric in diastolic volume minus systolic volume divided by the in diastolic volume if you want to get percentage you have to multiply by 100 so this is the recommended method not this linear method is applicable anymore that we are being doing before so this is the volumetric volumetric um, method so we, yeah, we do uh, this yes Uh, volumetric method that is biplane simpson method because we can get actually this yeah, I, he, no he just cannot do that i have to come and see him tell him to wait he has to wait yes okay yeah yeah because i have other stuff to emer emergency to handle i just cannot come and you know it's not up to him it's up to me okay nasibha um, nasibha if you can mute yourself i'm sorry Uh, so volumetric volumetric we do like you know that little little boxes those are the volume of like area of that small area so it kind of summarize the whole volume so definitely this is more reliable and more authentic way to do the ejection fraction by plain simpson method we call or the method of dix because we take there is a actually way to do in the machine you can do by yourself like all the endocardial border only drawback of doing this biplane simpson method you have to see the whole 
endocardial border. Otherwise, you will not be able to do it. So sometimes whenever the image quality is not good, this is actually, this is the volumetric. Like you can see all the area separately. You can measure the, all the area separately and then it's summarized. So definitely it gives you more authentic volumetric measurement of ejection fraction. So this was the one I was trying to play the, that time. Something happened actually. My um, to the source file to now never the key. मेट्रिक मेथड सो आई एक्टिंग Uh, um, it is not actually playing properly. So that one was like we, the like Takasubo or wall motion abnormalities. Whoever has maybe anterolateral wall, those wall are hypokinetic. The basal movement is very good. So if we take that linear method of measuring the LV function, in that case it will be normal. But if you take the overall the heart function like volume, in that case it may be like I, I was showing actually one of my patient video there that whenever we did the uh, linear method in the basal area, the ejection fraction was 55 to 60. But whenever we did that volumetric, the whole a whole volumetric, it came up about 35. So definitely it's a big difference. That's why it's not really recommended anymore. So if we are not, so I said only drawback cannot do the volumetric method. So whenever we, we have bad images, we cannot do that. Patient is big and the endocardial water is not clear. We do definitely. I'm not sure Bangladesh, in Bangladesh we use definitely or not. That is actually fluent lipid microsphere. It's a very, it's a lipid particle. It's actually not even a medicine. It says a natural lipid particle very, so because lipid is in the sonogram, we see actually white. So whenever we push the microscopic lipid, lipid particle, IV injection, that actually gives us this kind of whiteness, like whole thing get white. So we can see even it is a whatever patient is bad images or big it is, it doesn't matter. It gives us very nice clear cut images uh, of that actually LV. We use actually definitely like this perfluorant for the endocardial broader ejection fraction to see the wall motion, to see the apical thrombus or not. Because a lot of time we know that it gets foreshortening. We cannot see the apex where there is a thrombus or not. So that actually can, we can see very nicely. So we use actually definitely to see this endocardial border and measure, do the correct measurement. This is the systole, diastole, apical, and two chamber. This is also to do the ejection fraction Simpson method. Okay, so that is the thing. Like you know, the linear measurement is not recommended by ACC or HA guideline anymore at all. So you always do volumetric. We are not able to see. We use definitely. Okay, I don't know. This video is playing. This is one of my patient video too. Uh, so the what else we see in the parasternal long axis? We can see actually, but this is not coming. So this is a pericardial temporal, right? It's a pericardial efficient. Maybe I should go. Okay, let me go there. So only thing I wanted to say, oh, I was telling all the anatomy, right? So this is actually in the atrioventricular junction. We like outside of the heart, we are seeing what is this structure? Can anybody tell me? Yes, it's a lung with the pericardial effusion. So this circular one, the one the I'm actually... Descending thoracic out. 
Yeah, this end in thoracic aorta. Very good. So in the atrioventricular junction over there, it's a descending thoracic, like thorax aorta is going backward, and we can see in the outside. So this is very important landmark to figure out actually pericardial effusion and pleural effusion. Because the pericardium is pericardial effusion developed between the pericardium and myocardium. And this is the outside of the heart structure, right? The descending thoracic aorta. So the a lot of time it is so big and so huge is very difficult to differentiate patient as pericardial effusion and or pleural effusion so this is our landmark actually the descending thoracic aorta if it is in front of the descending thoracic aorta it is a pericardial effusion if it is a beyond or posterior side of the descending thoracic aorta it is a pleural effusion this is our landmark this is the to differentiate because sometimes this pericardial pleural effusion is so big, you may be confused which one it is. So that is one of the differentiating point. Where is the position of the descending aorta? Because the uh, pericardial effusion will push the aorta back, but pleural effusion will actually put push the aorta towards the heart. So that's why it will be it will be be uh, posterior side of the pleural efficient and in the anterior of the descending aorta is pericardial efficient. Another thing we see in the very important, what is this one? What is this, uh, the pathology? Dissection, aortic dissection. Aortic dissection, yes, very good. So aortic dissection from the parasternal long axis view, we see it's a lot of time it is flipping. This is also acute emergency. I try to show the more acute emergency thing because those are the important thing we should not be missing and everybody should know in them because you will not have time to call cardiology or get an official echo. This kind of thing you can do with the point of care ultrasono and you should be able to make the diagnosis, diagnostic dissection. Another, I don't know this one play or not. I'm so sorry. Today in London, my video is playing. I'm sorry. I think I want this share option. It is really not coming. Anyway, there was a one of my real patient aortic dissection when I was fellow. I did that actually the poor point of care after the echocardiogram and it was like, this is the still picture. This is not mine, but that one was my patient picture. So it was like flipping back and forth with huge aortic, uh, um, aortic valve regurgitation and patient came with the crushing chest pain. The uh, EKG was showing actually RCA, right-sided ST elevation MI. So that's why they call the um, cardiology call because it's a, they they thought it is the RCM. We know that dissection, which uh, which uh, uh, acute um, uh, ST elevation is uh, usually comes first with aortic dissection. RCA because the RCA is up right right coronary artery right. coronary artery arise from the up and the left coronary arise right aortic dissection first artery get involved and can get close which is rca left will be it is if not that is not possible but it is very down it arises from the very down to so to get up to the left main it takes actually it has to totally rupture inside the uh, a, a cardiac cavity and patient usually don't survive too long but rca is arise from the up of the aortic uh, sinus so um, in that case actually this is the first artery get involved with aortic dissection. So a lot of time aortic dissection patient actually can present, like people initially think that, oh, oh it is a RCA ST elevation on inferior thrombolysis. Please, please always do a focus echocardiogram to rule out, especially for the RCA ST elevation MI. Always get a chest X-ray because widening of the mediastinum, get a focus. You can see the wall motion. Definitely the RCS elevation is there, but it is not for the MI. It is because of the dissection blockage of the ostium of the right coronary artery. So this is the view will save your life and you will not thrombolize because if you thrombolize this 
patient, uh, patient will die in a second, right? Aortic, acute aortic dissection. So extremely important. That video was one of my actually, when I was cardiology fellow on call and I did that focus and that video actually I saved in my cell phone. So I really wanted to share with you, uh, but uh, unfortunately it's not opening. I, I think whatever picture I take from outside, but from my own video is not playing somehow. Anyway, so maybe next time I'll try how I can make it better. This is also one of my patient actually 2016, I published actually this paper. So this is also echo. So this from the parasternal long axis view, another very important structure we get from parasternal that is coronary sinus. Usually whenever we are not here. So let's go back to the parasternal. So here, coronary sinus usually lies here, like in the in in this corner, um, uh, like inside coronary sinus means it's not the opening. Opening of the coronary sinus is that we saw in the RC um, right ventricular inflow view. But here, you know, the part of the coronary sinus we see inside the muscles with the systole diastole. You can see small little slit. You are not able to even see, but whenever coronary sinus is dilated, you can see this type. This. Is also my real patient. It's actually uh, very interesting. 2016. So yesterday I wanted to take this picture and I went back that publication. They are asking me for fifty three dollar to pay for my own paper. So that was interesting. After that I searched in Google and I found I I was searching different actually picture in, in Google. Then I saw. Oh, it's my picture is there in Google. But uh, when I wanted to go to my paper, it, it is asking $53. So that was interesting. That is interesting. Probably it's a very cited one, uh, Lopa. On excited, uh, I, hoi, sir, why demand I don't know what I'm access this low I have to pay for it. But I have to pay for it. I have to pay I don't go back and look for my own paper like Chejuno again experience hoini. Kin the picture to Junoi Ashana Jeti Chilam Kin to Tarpora Pora Diki Google Ipa Jatsi. Uh to so eta hocche je amar ekta amari ekta patient ami echo korar shomoy ei this was the picture so everything is fine only huge right side we can see and this coronary sinus initially i thought oh is it a uh, aorta descending aorta what is this structure but aorta is here right is outside the heart this is inside the myocardium hugely dilated coronary sinus and i can see the right side was very high so this is actually one of my patient then we did so then I did actually bubble study. Maybe if I get chance another day, I'll, I'll show how the bubble study helped to make you confirm diagnosis of persistent left superior vena cava, which is a congenital anomaly, left superior vena cava persists because whenever we grow, we born, it, it turn into a gigas vein, but it gets rudimentary. But we, we have only the right sided superior vena cava, right? Left side is super cover gone whenever we grow like already born. Some people left superior vena cover persist and it drains actually in the coronary sinus. So because of the left side of the arm, get all the drainage to the coronary sinus, it get dilated, right side of the heart get dilated. And these people usually have coronary sinus ASD as well. So you can confirm with the bubble study. If you inject the bubble, bubble study we do with the echo, right? We, may, we take a little bit of air and the normal saline we push, we make it bubble and we inject it. So if you do the bubble study from the right side of the hand, it will go to the right atrium. That's how it is, like superior vena cover draining in, into right hand. But left side, uh, left arm, if you inject the cor bubble in the left arm, it will go to coronary sinus in the state of right atrium first. First, you can see the bubble here, then you can see in the so in the left, left at, right atrium. So this is actually confirmatory test, only simple echo and bubble study, you are confirming a big congenital anomaly. Because this kind of patient don't get the diagnosis. A lot of, for years and years, my, this patient, we got diagnosis like with this echo only. I was the one reading 62 years. 
Before that, he was on, for 20 years, he was on pulmonary hypertension treatment because he has a huge right side. He has all the pulmonary hypertension, patient had shortness of breath, all the features. So he was on 20 years pulmonary hypertension treatment. But only this echo, if we know the thing, so this is the diagnosis. Then we did, I did the bubble study that was confirmed that it was going to coronary sinus. We sent for MRI. This is my same patient, left persistent is busy and patient got surgery. So that's Lopa, a big this is thing. A, this is a quick presentation. A quick chomot kar chikin. The amader is like time kub short. Tomar ki aro kotha. Okay, amar mona hai ek taba duita. Ami wall motion ta arak din korbo. Uh, Karan wall motion ta arak tu beshi kotha bolte hobe. Ar shesh jeta ami tu hotsi je ekhane amar arak ta ye video chilo. Ar eta shudu eta diye shesh korbo. Eta o amar arak ta question chidi ashle image ami eta share korar lok ta shamlate parchi na arki. So, this is the question. What is the diagnosis? So, I have a question. This is the 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 question. This is there was something like prominent hair, prominent hair, also prominent hair and there. So I kind of reported this is like huge dilated, RA, RV, ejection fraction fine. And there is a uh, prominent eustachian valve. Eustachian valve is the rudimentary valve or IVC. So this is what is the diagnosis actually. So it is actually very interesting. Transplanted heart. Transplanted heart who is very good, transplanted heart. Because what happened in the transplanted heart, we actually leave the native atrium. heart, both atrium. We kind of put the new heart, we attach with the atrium because we want to save the pulmonary veins and the vena cavas from the native. And then the rest of the ventricular part, we attach with the uh, heart. So that's how it looks like two kind of slitted or septed or slitted actium, right and left. Another very interesting thing, this patient get two P wave because patient has one SA node from the native, one SA node from the transplanted heart. So transplanted heart one get contacted and native one remain there. So it is a two P wave. This is not flatter. This is not attack. This is a two P wave from the transplanted heart. That's it. Lopa, do you have this patient's ECG? Yeah, this is the ECG actually. No, this is during echo. 12th grade ECG, no. do you have this? No, actually, unfortunately, I don't have. The reason is that, like, it's uh, during my fellowship. Like, you know, right. the, whenever we do fellowship, I'm actually fellow. I get it. Kori pore eshe hoche. Amader attending that. Next time recommendation thank be. Jokoni transplant harder paava. Taun ekta twelfth grade ECG jawan thakbe to dakhwa. হ্যাঁ অবশ্যই ইনশাআল্লাহ দেখাবো তো এরকম হচ্ছে যে দেখতে হয় দুইটা পিওএফ থাকে অনেক সময় এরা মিস ডায়াগনোসিস হয় দে ফ্লাটার অথবা এটা তো ফ্লাটার রেট না আর কি অ্যাটাক অথবা সামথিং অথবা হচ্ছে মোবিস টাইপ 2 এই টাইপের আর কি ব্যাপার আসে কিন্তু এটা আসলে ট্রান্সপ্লান্টেড হার্ট ওপা দিস ওয়াজ এন এক্সেলেন্ট এক্সেলেন্ট প্রেজেন্টেশন এবং এটা আমরা কন্টিনিউ করলাম নিজেও আজকে অনেক কিছু শিখলাম আই এম শিওর সবাই খুব बेनिफिटेड হয়েছে দিস ওয়াজ আ মানে এক্সেলেন্ট ইন্ট্রোডাকশন এবং এটা Definitely, Tomar Amar Dharana Shabaki Upuki the Kursa. Professor Azam, Kuno concluding remarks. The remarks of the Ami Nasser Ami Protome, Dono Dichi, O Ashule, first presentation, very nicely say Ami Shiksi Protom Te, first letty. Ashule patient come to Shashan the mother Dandigar Hikutam, Ami just they come the Bama Terek Dandi, I will give you what can do whatever. Etamakam Shangati Bavanara this. I'm actually. এত দিন চিন্তা করলাম কিন্তু এইটা আমি চিন্তা করে বের করতে পারলাম না এটা আমার কাছে টপক লাগতেছিল যাই হোক আমি আজকে কথা বলবো না আর একটু শর্ট করে আমার কাছে মনে হয় কি না স্যার যে আমাদের সাথে সাথে সিনিয়র সাথে সাথে আলাপ করে 30 মিনিটস প্রেজেন্টেশন আর 20 মিনিটস ধরো বা 15 মিনিটস ডিসকাশন আর 15 মিনিটস পার্টিসিপেটরি ডিসকাশন করলে ভালো হবে আর সদস্য স্যার এখানে আসলে আমি দেখতে পাচ্ছি সদস্য স্যার যদি একটু তুমি একটু সদস্য হচ্ছে আমাদের বঙ্গবন্ধু মেডিকেল ইউনিভার্সিটির ডিন ডিন হ্যাঁ সদস্য স্যার 
मुनिरा <laughs> ग्रेटफुल uh, and uh, thanks to the organizers thank you thank, thank you thank you so thank much sir professor, thank you professor abdul wada choudhury concluding remarks please lopa ji achhi lo kintu ghumate parchilam na wadu sir wadu sir ke bole sir ami sokal theke syndicate meeting chilo university meeting chilo ekon to as apnar sathe is meeting chilo ekta age नाम शुने फेसबुक लिंक लगे लिंक थैंक यू सबाई के तेल आज के बांगे अनेक रात हो गए
আমরা এখানে অনেক কাজের মধ্যে আছি তো थैंक यू সো মাচ সবাইকে অনেক অনেক ধন্যবাদ সবাইকে অনেক ধন্যবাদ অনেক সিনিয়র আসছেন সবাইকে আসসালামু আলাইকুম অনেক ধন্যবাদ আসসালামু আলাইকুম গুড নাইট জি তোমাদের গুড নাইট আদিত ভাই এবং আপনি কোলি প্রফেসর চৌধুরী এবং আজমকে অনেক थैंक यू আজকে অ্যাটেন্ড করার জন্য আমাদের সাথে প্রফেসর ডক্টর আজম তোপাকে এবং 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 প্রফেসর সজল ব্যানার্জি এজ ওয়েল আই এম সরি আজম বলো खुलना मेडिकल कलेजे खुलना nuclear cardiac city any topic i can talk about amader ajoy ajoy ache silete o cardiac mr kore ar ki to amra bolbo shobai sathe amader ekta communication ekta platform to ache ota te jogajog hobe ar ki inshallah i'll love to talk about t actually transesophageal amar mone hoy bangladesh ektu kom practice hoy transthoracic er che to ota ni ektu session korte parle mone hoy khubi bhalo hobe ha next time amra oi ajoy डिजाइन कर खुबी चमत्कार कहार कर मार्शराफी बुजते फिजिसियन बस्टन 
আমার মনে হয় আমরা অনেক রাত হয়েছে আসলে আমরা একটু এখন মানে খাওয়া দাওয়া করতে হবে ভালো থাকবে আর আমরা ভবিষ্যতে আর আরো সুন্দর ভাবে আগাতে হবে আরকি